Welcome to the Nashville Parthenon's Create Series, a way to learn as we create by using the Parthenon's architecture and the museum's collection as our inspiration. This is the statue of Athena Parthenaios in the Nashville Parthenon. It was completed in 1990 by the sculptor Alan LaGuire. But did you know that there was another Athena? In the 1920s, Belle Kenny and her husband, Leopold Schultz, were commissioned to create the pedimental sculpture for the Nashville Parthenon. Kenny and Schultz also created this miniature version of the Athena Parthenaios in preparation for creating a full-scale sculpture in the newly completed Naos. These plans were put on hold due to the Great Depression, and the small maquette, the sculptor's draft, presided over the room until 1986, when the larger statue by LaCroix was installed. Today, the maquette is on the lower level of the Parthenon, and she's the first Athena to greet visitors as they enter the building. While I do love our statue upstairs, I have always wondered what this statue would look like if it were enlarged to fill the naos. And that is where this session's art project comes in. In this session, we'll be using a grid to transform the maquette into a colossal statue filling the empty naos. We will be using a photograph of the empty naos and a photograph of the maquette. Visit the link in the description below to get printable images so you can follow along. Artists have been using a grid as far back as ancient Egypt. It is a way for artists to divide an image into squares that can be easily replicated or resized. Somehow, this technique was lost in antiquity, and art became rather flat and confused. It wasn't until the 1400s, not long before the Renaissance, the European artists rediscovered this helpful method. The rediscovery of the grid technique gave artists the ability to replicate the world around them in a convincing way. Artists also realized that using a grid was a great way to enlarge smaller sketches. One artist of our own time who uses a grid in this way is Chuck Close. For this project, you'll need printed images found in the link in the description below. Pencil, an eraser, a ruler, and for finishing touches, gel pens or markers in white and gold. I've drawn a grid over the image of the maquette using half inch squares. You'll see in the printable images that this has already been done for you. Let's label the grid. Mark A, B, C and D along the columns above the picture and along the side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Once you have your image of Athena labeled, we're gonna draw the grid on the picture of the empty nails. Try to use light lines. We'll start with the center line going down the middle of the page, and then we're going to measure one inch intervals away from our center line. Now let's move to the bottom of the page and do the same thing. Find your center line and measure one inch intervals along each side. Now let's connect the top and bottom marks. Make sure the ruler touches both marks so the lines are perfectly straight. Draw dark enough that you can see the line but light enough that you can erase it later to give the full illusion of our finished drawing. Now let's create the marks along the side of the paper. Line up your ruler to match the top of the image and mark in one inch intervals down the side of the paper. Now let's go to the other side. It's important that your ruler starts in the same place.
Now, let's connect the lines going across the page. You may find it easier to turn the page to the side. Line up your ruler so that it touches the mark on each side. You only need to draw lines within the ones we've already created. Let's label the grid. Mark A, B, C, and D, and along the side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Place the image of Athena near the naos. I prefer doing my initial drawing in pencil but to make it easy for you to see, I'm gonna be brave and draw in marker. Let's start in the box for 10A. This is our lowest box on the left-hand side. We'll be drawing the bottom of the column. Notice where the column sits. Is it halfway up in the box? How far over does the image go? Next, we'll start drawing the column lines all the way up. It's good to note where the column line will end. Look at your grid. Mark the top of the column so you can find it easily. You can add some decorative details if you like. I'm going to add some lines to fill in where the column is. Next, we'll draw Athena's fingers. They rest on the column and hold Nike. You don't have to worry about fingernails and details with this picture. Just put in some markings to tell the viewer where her fingers are resting. And then we'll add in part of her wrist and arm. Look at where they pass in the grid. Notice how far up the line goes. Now we'll add Nike. Look at how her dress comes across the line and how her knee bends before the box ends. You can put in some details if you like. Now we'll add her back and her head. Put in the front of her body and her little arms. Again, no details are required here. Next, we'll add her wing. Notice how much of it crosses the lower line of the box. We can also see some of her back wing, so be sure to include that too. To make Athena's arm more visible, I'm going to fill it in with my white gel pen. Now I'm going to move over to Athena's neck. Look at how it's divided with the line between B and C. Notice how far the neck goes to the side. Does it go halfway across the box? Less than halfway? Go ahead and mark 
where Athena's chin crosses our center line. Once you feel good about the placement of the lines, you can fill it in. We won't worry about the details of Athena's face. The maquette doesn't have any painted details. They're all just done in sculpture. Now, let's add in the shoulder of Athena's garment. Add in the helmet along the side of her neck and over her head. and then back down the other side of her neck. Notice where the pegasus and the plumes meet the helmet. Find the spot where they'll finish and connect the line. Use the grid to figure how tall the Sphinx is. Make sure it stays within the box. Now let's add the other Pegasus and the plume above it. Let's draw in the other line for her shoulder. Now we'll draw in her other arm. Pay close attention to where it is on the grid. Part of her arm is covered by her dress. We'll follow the line down to where her hand holds the shield. This arm may be a little tricky because it's bent and it's pointing in our direction, which is something artists call foreshortening. Again, no need for details, just mark where her hand is. Be sure to follow the image as you see it on the grid so that it'll look right when you're finished. Now let's put in the round head of Medusa and then we'll add in the details on her aegis or her breastplate. If we were to look really close we would see some small snake details but since we're drawing very large we don't have to worry about those details. Now let's look at the folds in her garment. Try to follow the lines as they fold towards her waist. Notice the darker line of where the top of her dress and the lower part meet. When you're adding in details, try to move your pen along with the natural folds that are already there.
Now let's add her skirt. Look at how close her skirt is to the column. Does it touch the column? Does it go right along the edge of the column? Let's follow the folds along the side of her dress. Where does her shoe end? Does it go down as far as the column? Or is it a little bit above that? Don't forget to draw in her toes. Again, it's hard to see individual toes, so just mark where they go according to the grid. Notice the ripple in the fabric below her waist. Let's try to mark that in. Now, Let's follow the side of her dress as it goes down along her knee. Notice how her dress is smooth where her knee is pushed forward. All around that leg, we have lines going down, down to the floor. Make some nice, long, vertical lines to show those folds. Make sure you're following the lines of the folds here. If you're coloring side to side, the dress is going to look flat and kind of funny. So try to follow the natural lines of her dress. Now we'll add in the snake. Look at where the snake's head lines up with our grid. The snake is also in poor shortening. Part of it curves away and part of it curves towards us. It's emerging from the shadows, so only draw what you can see. Finally, let's add the shield. The shield starts between the thumb and fingers of her hand and find the widest point of the shield. And then follow the line up to her hand and find the point where the shield touches the ground and bring that up to match the middle point. The shield also fades into the darkness, but we'll go ahead and fill it in. We finished. Experiment with using the grid on another picture. Continue your adventure. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you're the first to know about all the exciting things happening at the Nashville Parthenon.